Hello friends, I'm Ashling. you're very welcome here. Today I'm gonna do a bit of a video about books, you yeah, wouldn't have guessed it, but uh, specifically about the 24 books on my shelves that I wanna read in 2024. I actually wanna read about 115 books on my shelves in 2024. I, I won't manage that in 2024, but these are kind of 24 books that I have picked from my shelves given the year that we have and I'm hoping to definitely get around to all of these. I don't know much about them even though they're from my own shelves because my brain just can't recall information but I'm going to talk about them really quickly anyway and just mention them um, because if I read the blurbs on the back of every one of them we're going to be here till 2025. So the first book I have in my hand, of course these are in no particular order by the way, but the first book I have is a... Rachel Cusk book and it is Outline so it is the first in a trilogy of books so this is the first one Outline and then there's Transit and then there's Kudos and all I know about this book is the first line of the blurb says that it is a book in 10 conversations and I think it's set in Athens over summer if I'm not mistaken. I have read one Rachel Cusk book before it was her Booker Prize nominated one second place it was I had middling feelings about it so I suppose this might be why this one has kind of sat on my shelf for a long time but it is a literary novel and I'm going into it with zero expectations so I hope that I really enjoy it. Okay book number two then is a fantasy book. I can't really tell you much more about it than that. It's by T. Kingfisher and it is Nettle and Bone so this is probably I would say T. Kingfisher's kind of most well-known book and I know that there's something to do with sisters and a prince and something. I don't really know but I know that it's really well loved and it's not very long and I don't know why I haven't read it because I bought it in September ready to read it in October and somehow just never managed to get around to it. Book number three is a series that I feel like I have been reading forever. So I would have started this series in probably 2018. Now I know this author is kind of controversial in that he can be a little bit misogynistic his characters can be a little bit but I have to say I really enjoy this author um, but this series of his is something a little bit different for me and I'm I suppose I won't say I'm struggling my way through it but I'm definitely taking my time because I'm only going into the fifth book now and that is in the Dark Terror series so this one is called Wolves of the Kala. So I know that there was a film made of this whole series. I don't really know how they managed that. Well I guess they didn't because nobody seemed to really enjoy it but I have read the first four books but the last book that I read, I read it in April of 2022. Too. So there has been a huge gap here for me. Why I want to persevere with this is because my partner has a tattoo on his wrist. It is a series of symbols to do with the Dark Tarot novels. He will tell me if I ask, I know he will, but I want to find out for myself what the significance of these symbols is and what they mean. We're getting there. Book number five. I only have a few to go. I'm halfway. So yeah, I really want to start to prioritize this series again because I was enjoying it some of them more than others it's really strange um the first book I think for me was the hardest book to get through because I was like oh if the whole series is like this then I don't know but I read the first book and it was strange and really intriguing and then I went into the second book and it was much more kind of present day-ish and yeah, it was much more for me manageable. Next is a book that's quite interesting. It's sat on my shelves for a while. I bought this, I think, out of a voucher that I got for Christmas 2021, I'm gonna say. And the book in question is Illumine by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I read Nevernight by Jay Kristoff last year, 2023, and I wasn't enamored with it. So this one is kind of sitting there and but it actually looks pretty cool it's got like it's not just like a novel it's got like a lot of different kind of things going on a lot of uh you see what I mean like conversations and files and things I don't really know what it's about first survive then tell the truth so it's got to be a bit exciting I've heard really good things about this on the front Marie Lu author of the legend trilogy says never have I read a book so wholly unique and utterly captivating so I mean if that's on a sell I don't know what it is. next up then is another fantasy book and this is one that I don't know why I've been putting it off I think it's just the size of the book um, in terms of holding it 
uh, when I'm trying to read but this one is a book by Mark Lawrence and it is the book that wouldn't burn and I feel like this is another book that did really well last year really really well loved George R. R. Martin has blurbs the front just saying an excellent writer but I feel like reviews for this have been absolutely glowing and there's something to do with libraries it's fantasy it's supposed to be a bit of fun it's supposed to be really good so yeah that's another book that I really want to read this year. My cat's just come into the room and we just know she's gonna try to fuck shit up. <laughs> Excuse my language. Hey little baby girl. That's my cat for you. Paw in the eye. Next up is another book that's been sitting on my shelves for ages. It is the last Donna Tartt novel that I haven't read. So I have read The Goldfinch, one of my favourite books of all time, and The Secret History. Again, probably one of my favourite books of all time. Something I'd like to reread actually, because I feel like when I read it, I didn't absorb it as well as maybe I should have. I didn't pay enough attention. I just kind of read through it and only afterwards it sat with me. So it's one of those books that, you know, when you don't know what you're reading, you don't really appreciate what you're reading until you finish it and then you can't stop thinking about it, but you don't know why you can't stop thinking about it. Anyway, I also can't stop talking. The book, of course, that I haven't read is The Little Friend by Donna Tartt. And I think this is a book whereby a young boy goes missing and then we are trying to figure out what happened to him through his sister's perspective I think so the family never really get answers um, as such and it's the effect that that has on his sister's life. I hope I haven't completely smushed that up but I think that's what this book is about. Another series of course that I'm going to start even though I'm in the middle of a million series Scythe by Neil Schusterman and this book has something to do with people who work as professional grim reapers. I think it's young adults. I think there are three books in the series and I think that's about all I know about this book, but I am excited for it. Next up is the third book in a trilogy, um, the Winter Night trilogy. So I just finished The Girl in the Tower and the book that came first, of course, was the infamous Bear and the Nightingale. So this book is The Winter of the Witch and Again, we follow Vasya and her siblings and we're dealing with the repercussions of what happened in the second book. Of course, I can't really say much more than that, but I'm really looking forward to reading this and finishing out this trilogy. It's been really mystical, really sort of kind of Russian folk tale -y, really just immersive for me personally and I can't wait to get around to this one. Next up, another series, Joe Abercrombie. The Blade itself, part of a trilogy, no, yes, a trilogy, and I don't know anything about this apart from the fact that it is supposed to be absolutely terrific, so I'm really looking forward to getting around to it. It is like high fantasy, I think. Another one blurbed by George R. R. Martin. His name seems to get around in terms of blurbs for books, doesn't it? The main character is called Logan Ninefingers, that's fun, that's... Literally, I'm not reading the blurb on the back, but that is yet another book on my shelves that I really want to get around to this year. Another book, Agatha Christie, The Murder on the Links. So I think this is the second novel that was ever published by Agatha Christie and her second Poirot novel. I've only ever read one Agatha Christie book and it was The Mysterious Affair at Styles. I sort of felt middle of the road about it, but for some reason I decided I was going to read her books in order of publishing so from start to finish probably not the best way to do it because I've literally only read one but this one is as I've said another Poirot one something to do with a murder something to do with golf which has kind of been putting me off because I'm not a golf girly but I'm sure that doesn't actually make any difference at all I don't know why I haven't read this it's really short and I've been feeling the call for a bit of Agatha Christie lately so this is coming soon next up Angela Carter and this one is Heroes and Villains and this I feel like is a bit kind of magical as well. Something to do with a girl living in a tower, something along those lines. Um, I did read Angela Carter's book of short stories, The Bloody Chamber. Um, so that book was like a series of stories kind of they were like series of like fairy tale retellings but they're really dark really gothic in an Angela Carter style and that was the only of her works that I've ever read and I really loved it so I'm looking forward to getting around to this this year. Another book 
I don't know who I thought I was when I was buying this book but there was definitely a lot of hype around it at the time that I bought it and the book is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I am not much of a romance girly but I'm feeling the pull towards Emily Henry a bit this year. I believe this is about two people who are working as authors or journalists or publishers, something to do with like the book world. It's like an enemies to lovers one but I've heard that if you don't like romance books Emily Henry is the romance author for you so yeah. Oscar's back. Actually looking forward to that. Um, thank you. Next up is a Japanese translation and it is Breasts and Eggs by Miko Kawakami and I think this is a book that is set in two so one to do with feminism and fertility and things like that. It is a novel and I think like the first part is set a while before the second part. I'm really blundering this. Basically I don't know what it's about but I know it's to do with women in the broadest sense. So yeah, looking forward to that one too even though apparently I don't actually know what it's about. Next up, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. God, this is actually even hurting my upper back picking it up. So this is Victor Hugo, obviously translated from French, a well-known classic, probably better known for being a Disney film from Disney's renaissance there back in the kind of early to mid 90s. That is my only knowledge of this story. Follow a disabled man who is a bell ringer in Notre Dame and he's kept there by a man called Frodo. Is it Frodo? Frollo. Sorry, I'm thinking of a completely different book, Frollo, and he's not a very nice man and he is trying to wipe out all of the gypsies in Paris. And I'm sure that the Disney version of this has very much kind of washed over a lot of the more grim aspects of it. So I'm really looking forward to it. It is chunky, but I just feel like it's time. It's time. And then we have a book that I had never heard of until I received it as a gift from my partner. And it is a self-published book. And that book is The Sword of Kaigen by M. L. Wang. I believe this book is actually self-published. And for some reason, I tend to kind of steer myself away from self-published books. But when you look up reviews for this book, it is apparently incredible. It's quite chunky as well. I think it's over about 600 pages. And I did read a bit of a blurb and it was saying that it's like the Poppy Wars darkness meets the last airbender's elemental magic. I haven't been so emotionally moved by a book in a long while. I'm sold. Next up is a book of short stories that I was kindly gifted by a lovely friend of mine and I haven't read it yet and I got it over a year ago. What am I doing? I'm really looking forward to it. It's a book of Irish short stories and it is called The China Factory by Mary Costello and I don't know anything about it as such but I really want to read it. I just feel like when I'm gifted a book I really feel interested in it because it's something that was picked out especially for me and there's usually a reason for that. Next up, second book in a trilogy and it is of course the second book in the His Dark Materials trilogy and that is The Subtle Knife. I read Northern Lights a couple of years ago and it is once again one of my favourite books of all time so of course I haven't read the sequel to it yet. I am who I am. We follow Lyra in this again but I feel like it's a very different novel than the first one. I just fell in love with the first one. We go into this kind of what felt like really academic, dark world. Lots of adventure, just so much going on. My cat is shouting like mad. Next up then is a book that's been on my shelves for a while. The book in question is Snow by Orhan Pamuk. I have never read anything by this author. I think it's to do with a journalist in Turkey. And that's about all I know. And probably Snow probably a lot of snow in here somewhere along the line. Next up is a book that was published in 2023 and it got a lot, like a lot a lot of love and that book is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed, and I th think this is kind of dark academia-ish something to do with rivalry between archaeology students? Am I completely thinking of a different book? Did I say archaeology or did I say architecture? Because architecture students. 
but yeah it's the book I'm thinking of it sounds really intriguing to me and I really want to read it and again I don't know why I haven't quite gotten around to it yet next up is a book that was kind of released pretty much in tandem with another book they come as a pair not necessarily as a pair but they're definitely together-ish I think this one was published first I could be wrong maybe they were published together but I think this one was published first and then the next one was published like really soon after but it's a Cormac McCarthy book and this is the, the Passenger and I think it's set in the 80s in Mississippi and after that I know nothing about it. It is a literary novel um, being Cormac McCarthy I've heard good things about it and the book that was published with it was I think it was called Stella Marie so hopefully I get around to reading this and then manage to pick up Stella Marie in the same size as this because it will really annoy me if they're different sizes on my shelves. Next up then is another Irish novel it is The Colony by Audrey McGee. I was this book long list for the Booker Prize maybe in 2022-ish which is probably how it came upon my radar and it, I know there's something to do with somebody who like rows to an island so there's a boat hence probably the water possibly an island I really don't know anything about it other than that but it's another one that I really do want to get around to. Next up is a Greek retelling so I have read Song of Achilles by Madeline Minner and Cersei is one that has been on my shelves for a while since and I don't know why I haven't gotten around to it. I feel like I'm really intimidated by the idea of kind of mythological retellings. There's so much interest in like Greek retellings and I feel like everybody knows everything about Greek mythology and somehow I completely missed that boat. I know nothing about anything. I think I remember covering something to do with Helen of Troy in primary school. It's all new to me which is exciting but also it'd be nice to have a little bit um a little bit of background towards like the original story and then I could actually understand and contrast and compare the difference between the retellings but anyway I'm getting ahead of myself here this one of course is Circe and I think it's something to do with a witch and that is all that I remember about it the Song of Achilles was probably one of my favorite books of the year that I read it I didn't expect it to move me in the way that I did I thought I actually wasn't gonna like it and I put it off for a while and I feel like I'm doing a little bit of that with Circe as well even though I know that I loved Song of Achilles and I know that Circe is another book that people really really love so I do really want to get around to this one really soon. And then we have a little children's book, remember Moomins? So this one is Moomin Papa at Sea and it's by Tova Janssen. I don't know about you but Moomins are like such a comfort thing for me. I remember the first time I ever came across Moomins. The cartoon was on TV and I remember putting it on and thinking it was really weird and just I didn't like it but yet I kept watching them every day that they were on and naturally fell in love because moments but this is just a lovely little book that I don't really know anything about apart from it's about moments and it's a children's book and there are some lovely illustrations in here and there's a lighthouse kind of in the end pages and the actual book itself is orange which is really nice and also has that little illustration of the lighthouse I want to start reading these books because I've never actually read a Moomin's book. My only exposure to Moomin's has been the TV show that I loved so dearly when I was young. So I feel like it's definitely about time that I get around to this book. And then I have another literary novel that was gifted to me and I remember this one being quite hyped at the time maybe 2022 I'm going to say 2021 even and the book in question is Rainbow Milk by Paul Mendes. I think this is set in the 1950s and we follow like a boxer if I'm not mistaken. This is a queer novel. I remember some comparisons to James Baldwin's writing. I'm not sure why, I don't know in what context, but it was one of those ones that I always felt like would probably break my heart and that I would really love. Do you know when you have a book and you feel like you're gonna love it so you don't read it, you put it off until you feel like you want to read a book that you're gonna love? This has been one of those books for me, so I hope it doesn't completely let me down. I hope that I read it when I need to read it because I have a feeling that this is one that I'm really going to enjoy. So pals, there we have it. Those are 24 books from my shelves plucked quite randomly because let's be fair, I have about 115 books that I want to read from my shelves and there's actually a couple of books on there that I would like to reread as well. So 
we're gonna be here a while. If you think there are any books here that I should really be prioritizing, please do let me know. I do have my Goodreads linked to my account as well. So everything that is in my want to read shelf is a book that I either own physically or own on my Kindle. So quite shocking that there's over 220 books in there. If there's anything in there, if you ever go have a snoop that you think I need to absolutely read immediately or that you would like to see me read, do let me know in the comments below, contact me, get in touch. Yeah, that's that. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. So myself and Oscar are gonna bid you adieu. Thanks again and I'll chat to you soon in next week's video. Bye bye.